Welcome to Thrive Church. We are so glad to have you here uh, with us. And for those of you that might not know me, my name is Judith Thomas. I'm the lead pastor here at Thrive. And we are so glad to have you with us. And uh, just a quick note, uh, because as Carrie, uh, my wife, just mentioned, we're going to be launching our new Thursday service. We'll be having three services now every week. And uh, we are looking for people that have the gift of singing or playing instruments or such things is that. So if that's uh, something that's a desire in you, we're going to be having a little meeting after the second service, the 11 o'clock today in the green room. We'd love to chat with you and hopefully get you plugged in with that. So so if that's something you're interested in, make sure you uh, you chat with us about that. Um, we're continuing our series, Jesus Said What? And we're talking about some of the crazy things that Jesus said. Uh, We've talked about how he uh, wanted us to, um, you know, not not talk about or or not, not hate somebody, not be angry with somebody, how anger and hatred is the same as murder and how lust is the same as adultery. We talked about how God wants us to, to give of our time and our energy, our resources. He wants us to tithe, give generously to the church and the kingdom of God. We also talked about how when people do wrong to us, that we should not retaliate, we should not seek revenge. And today we're going to be continuing uh, in this vein, and, and it's called Love Who? Love who? Because we, we look about around us and we feel like God has called us to love people. But who are we supposed to love exactly? Now, Jesus, when he would talk to the crowds, when he would talk to people, he would often raise the bar. And you can put that in your notes, that he loved to raise the bar of what everybody was expecting. Everybody was expecting him to say something. All the religious leaders, they had certain beliefs. They had certain things that they thought they knew. And they said, we expect a rabbi, a teacher of the law to say this, And then Jesus would come in and he would raise the bar. And I've heard so many people over the years kind of imply like Jesus lowered the bar. And in some ways he certainly did because all of us can come to God, but Jesus loved to raise the bar. And and we would think that if you're trying to get a lot of people to follow you, that you would make it as easy as possible, right? I mean, we want to make this as easy as possible. It's like some of these things that you see online that are supposed to be free, right? They're like, just try this vitamin supplement and it's free. All you got to do is pay $2 shipping. Click here now, right? If you've seen something like that and you click there now, you get it. But what you don't realize is that they're going to charge you $100 a month for the rest of your life, and they're going to keep sending it to you. And you know how hard it is to cancel those things? It was easy to get signed up, but man, to to do it, you got to like send a certified letter, and it's got to be notarized, and you got to have a copy of your birth certificate to get out of this thing. Well, we think that, that it's easier, it's better if you lower the bar if you want more followers, but that's not what Jesus did. He made things harder. People believe certain things, and he made it even harder. And we're going to look today in Luke chapter 6, starting in verse 27. And listen to how he makes things harder. He says, but to you who are willing to listen. I mean, he's already setting it up, right? Are you willing to listen? To anybody here that's willing to listen, I wonder, are you willing to listen? Most people probably aren't. This is some tough stuff that Jesus talked about. And he says, but to you who are willing to listen, I say to you, love your who? Enemies? Jesus said, what? Jesus said, love your enemies. He said, do good to those who hate you and bless those who curse you and pray for those who hurt you? Jesus said, what? Like, I have a hard enough time loving my friends sometimes, much less loving my enemies. He wants me to love who? 
I mean, but you don't know what they've done. You don't know how much I dislike this person. He says, if you're willing to listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, and pray for those who hurt you. Skip into verse 32. It says, if you love only those who love you, why should you get credit for that? If you only love your mama and your daddy, well, hey, they, they have to love you, you know? Like, well, my mama loves me. Well, they, they don't have a choice, you know? It's like I tell my kids sometimes, it's like, I, I chose your mama, but I didn't choose you, you know? <laughs> it's like, you guys just moved right in. I had no choice in the matter. It, it, it says, if you love only those who love you, why should you get credit for that? Even sinners love those who love them back. And if you do good only for those who do good to you, why should you get credit? Even sinners do that much. Are you willing to listen? Jesus said, what? He said, love your enemies. Now, now let's be clear. We're not talking about like a romantic love. We're not saying you need to go out on a date with your enemy. We're not saying you need to, to get all nice and warm and cuddly with your enemy. But, but what this love that he's talking about it's, it's an overarching love. It's hoping for the best for that person, to be willing to pray for them, not to wish tragedy on them, as sometimes we do. We wish tragedy on people. We, we're not upset if, if something bad happens to them. But we're not talking about falling in love. You know what's interesting also? Jesus didn't command you to like your enemies. He didn't say you gotta like them but you got to love them. You ever love somebody that you don't like very much? Like, okay, you, so you guys seem really nervous right now. It's not a trick question. You ever like, love somebody you don't like? It's like, you know, I don't, I don't like you very much, but you're in my family, so I have to love you. I, I don't like you very much because of what you've done to me, but I'm, I'm choosing to love you regardless of the fact that I don't like you right now. But, but we think of love as this progression like boy meets girl and then they like each other and then the like turns to love and, and they live happily ever after. Jesus is saying, no, you don't have to like first. You love first. You may end up liking, but you may not end up liking. And that's okay. You may never like them. You may never approve of their opinions. You may never approve of the choices that they make. You may never approve of how they, they conduct themselves in this world. I'm not saying you have to befriend them. He doesn't say, make your enemies your friends. He says, you will have enemies. Each of you will have enemies. Love them. Love them. And I think as a result, loving your enemies is probably one of the most unreasonable things Jesus ever said. Love your enemies? People who, who hurt me, who do things against me? Oh, but you don't know what this person's done to me. Yeah, God does. Jesus knows what they did, and he says, love them. Love them. Love your enemies. I heard of a pastor once, and he got up in front of his church and said, Raise your hand if you have any enemies. And almost every hand raised. I, I thought about trying this, but I decided not to. Everybody raised their hands. Yeah, I have enemies. And he says, okay, well, well, you know, if you've had, if you have, uh, you know, less than, than, than 10 enemies, put your hands down. If you have all these enemies, you know, uh, if you don't have, you know, if you only have one enemy, then put your hands down. And finally, he says, if you have no enemies, then just, you know, raise your hand and this old guy in the back, he raised his hand and says, I don't have any enemies at all. And the pastor went up to him and says, are you serious? Like, you must really love people. How, how in the world can you live life and you don't have any enemies? He says, all the jerks died. <laughs> <laughs> at some point, I suppose, you can outlive your enemies. But Jesus, he's telling us that we need to love our enemies. That if you have someone that dislikes you, that we should turn around and love them. In your notes, you can write this down. That Jesus is telling us to love people no matter what they do to us. No matter what they do, Jesus is saying, you need to love that person. You need to love this person who's hurt you, who spoke uh, bad things about you. It doesn't matter how they treat us. That person that's insulted you, you need to love them. No matter what their actions are, you need to love them. We need to not act out in bitterness. We need to, to wish goodwill for them. 
And he keeps raising the bar here. Some people say, oh, all religions are, are the same. I saw a, a sign once, and it says, all religions are the same, and it had the golden rule, which is like, do for others what you have them do for you, and, and all that, and that sounds all nice, warm, and fuzzy. But did you know Jesus is the only person who ever said, love your enemies? Any world religion that ever has, has said something even remotely close took it from him. Because none of them would say that. They say, love your friends, love the people that believe the same way as you, love your neighbor, but your enemies. You don't love our enemies. Jesus was raising the bar here. He's raising the bar. Why should we love our enemies? Why should we do this? Well, one of the reasons I believe that God wants us to love our enemies in your notes is that when we love our enemies, it reveals an attribute of God. How he loved us even when we were far away from him. How he loved us so much that he sent his son Jesus. How Jesus loved people so much that when Jesus was nailed to the cross and hanging there and getting ready to die, Jesus prayed, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. Father, forgive them. He loved his enemies. It reveals an attribute of God. When we love our enemies, that's something supernatural. It's not natural. It's not something that's normal. In Psalms 103, verse 10, it says, he does not punish us for all our sins. He does not deal harshly with us as we deserve. We deserve punishment, but God loves us so much. And in his grace and in his mercy, he withholds a lot of the judgment, a lot of the punishment that we deserve. And when we live this way, we demonstrate what God is like, how God is merciful, how God is forgiving, how God is loving. He said, what? He said, to love your enemies. He said, what? He said, do good to those who hate you. We talked about hate a couple weeks ago and how hate is, is, is the same root as, as murder. But here, when somebody's hating you, what, what's our tendency? Our tendency is to, to retaliate back, to lash back out. Oh, all my haters, I don't have time for them. I don't care about them. I don't care what they say. See, it was accepted in that time period to do good for someone who did good for you. But what Jesus wants us to do in your notes, what Jesus wants us to do is he wants us to repay good for evil. Someone does something evil for, towards you, he wants you to repay them with good. Do good to those who hate you. Do good to those who hate you. It's like a story I read about, and it was a lady, and she went to the airport, and she went to a little store, and she bought a thing of cookies, and, uh, and she came and she sat down and I don't know, she's fumbling with all her stuff, getting ready to, to take her flight. And as she's there, like kind of going through her, her stuff, a guy sitting next to her reaches over and he opens up the package of cookies. It's hard to do one-handed. And he reaches in and he grabs a cookie. And he eats it. My wife warned me about eating Oreos here because I'm gonna have black stuff all over my teeth, I'm sure, but... And he sits there and he just eats it. He's reading his paper and he's eating a cookie. And the lady can't believe that he did that. So she reaches over and she grabs one of the cookies and she starts eating it. And he kind of looks at her and he finishes his cookie. And he reaches over and he grabs another cookie. And he starts eating it. I know some of you would already be in a fist fight by now. Um, so she reaches over and she grabs another cookie. And he reaches over and he grabs one. And then she grabs one. And he grabs one and she grabs one. And then there's one cookie left. So she's just glaring like, like what's he going to do now? He reaches over, he grabs the cookie. He breaks it in half and he gives her half of the cookie. And she's like, man, the audacity of this guy. She just cannot believe what he did. She's like, so, she, she's fuming. She grabs her stuff. She boards her airplane. As she's putting all her stuff away, she reaches in her purse. And guess what's there? Her package of cookies. <laughs> Sometimes we got to be careful. 
Do we love those that are doing things against us? Man, she was so defensive only to realize she was the one doing something. In Romans 12, 21, it says, don't let evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing good. Conquer evil by doing good. It's easy to, to be good to those that have done good things to you. Somebody helps you out. Somebody's nice to you. It's easy to be good to them. But, but when you're good to someone who's done you wrong, that's the kind of person that God trusts with great things. That's the kind of person that God blesses. When we're willing to, to live beyond ourselves, to allow his blessing to flow through us, to allow his love to flow through us, as we've talked about last week, not, not stopping the flow of God's blessing, when we're able to allow his blessing to flow through us, then he can do great things with us. In Proverbs 25, 21, it says, if your enemy is hungry, Give him food to eat. And if he's thirsty, give him water to drink. For you will heap burning coals on his head and the Lord will reward you. Now that doesn't sound as bad as it sounds there. It's not as bad. When he says heap burning coals, what, what they were talking about is that it was like melting when you would melt metal down to shape it into something. And these coals, they would pile it on top so it would soften it. Saying, when, when you heap the burning coals on someone's head, it's softening them. You're loving them. You're, you're acting out with goodness rather than with evil. So we love our enemies. Do good to those who hate us. Bless those who curse you. I wonder if you've ever gotten cursed out before. Or even just somebody, you know, gives you that one finger wave as they're driving down the road. You know, it's like, like you cut me off and then you're going to flip me the bird. Come on now. And, and what's our tendency to do? Our tendency is, is, is you know, I'm going to get right on their bumper. I'm going to flip them off. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to act out towards them. He says, bless those who curse you. Do we really need to do that? Do I really need to do that? How can I ever get to the point of wanting to bless someone who has cursed me? Because in your notes, blessing your enemies shows the world who you follow. Normal people don't bless their enemies. Normal people don't bless those who curse them. Normal people don't do good things for those who've hurt them. It's a supernatural thing. And only someone who's following Jesus has the capacity to bless someone who curses you. It shows, shows God that you have a, 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 the character to, to go higher, to grow. And it shows your enemies what you're really made out of. Oh, but I just got to lash out. No, no, take the high road. We need to be able to, to astonish the world with the love that God flows through us. We need to be willing to let his love shine through us. Because in John 13, 35, it says, your love for one another will prove to the world that you're my disciples. Your love. And a lot of times in this world, when people look at Christ followers, Christians, the first thing they think about is not the love that they show. It's maybe judgmentalism. It's, it's all these other things. But Jesus is saying, your love will prove to the world that you're my disciple. Your love towards your friends, yeah, of course. Towards your neighbor, yeah, of course, but also to your enemies. That's why when Jesus told the story of the Good Samaritan, he used someone who was an enemy. He says, you know, who, who's the real neighbor here? We need to love those people that we can't stand. We need to love the people that we think that we can't tolerate. Because when we bless our enemies, we show that we belong to God. We show that we're his. We show that we're following him. We need to say, you know, I, I'm going to take a stand. I'm not going to be bitter. I'm going to be better. I, I, I'm going to receive God's blessings, and I'm going to bless this person. I'm not going to be bitter towards them. I'm not going to hold a grudge. I'm not going to seek revenge. I'm not going to allow myself to be consumed by anger and hatred. I'm going to bless them. Because if you can't bless them, then you're limiting the blessings that can flow to you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who hurt you. You know, some people are mean and nasty and hurtful. I wonder, do you know anybody like that? Don't, don't elbow the person you're sitting next to, though. Be like, yeah, I'm sitting next to someone who's mean and nasty and hurtful. We all know people like that. And there's not a whole lot that you can do about it, but you can pray for them. You can't change them, but you can pray for them. 
You can't force them to be different, but you can change your attitude towards them. You can say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray for them. Not, not praying that they go bankrupt. Not praying that they get in a car accident. Not praying that their house burns down. Not praying that they fail out on a test. Not praying for those things. Praying good for them. Because in your notes, praying for your enemies helps you to see them the way God sees them. You know God loves your enemy as much as he loves you? The person that you despise most on this person, uh, on this planet, God loves them as much as he loves you. So when we pray for them, it allows us to see them as God sees them. It opens up our heart. You know, you can't pray for somebody if you hate them. You can't pray blessings on them if you're holding hate and anger towards them. We need to let that go. We need to pray for those who have done wrong towards us, who have done things, who have hurt us. In Acts 7, we, we see the end of a story, and this is Stephen. Stephen was one of the very first people in the early church who was a martyr. He was killed for his faith in Jesus Christ. And listen to what he says as they're stoning him, as he's getting ready to die. He says, as they stoned him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he fell to his knees shouting, Lord, don't charge them with this sin. And with that, he died. Lord, don't charge them with this sin. He's praying for those who hurt him. I wonder, can we do that? Can we love those who are our enemies? Can we pray for people who have hurt us? Because Jesus, he loves everyone. In fact, in your notes, Jesus cast this wide net of love. It's all all encompassing. It's overarching. It reaches to every single person. When Jesus said, love your enemies, you know what that really meant? He says, love even the furthest reaches of the people that you know and everybody in between. Love everybody. Seek the best for everybody. Pray for them. Don't don't look to retaliate, to get revenge. So I can't do that. I can't do that. I can't love my enemies. You don't know what's happened. I just can't do it. Because in your notes, loving your enemies is impossible to do on your own. You can't do it. It's a supernatural thing. God has to enable you to do that. It's not possible without a transformation of our heart. Without God working something in my heart, I I can't love someone who's hurt me. But Jesus is calling me to a higher level. He's raising the bar. He's saying, those people who have wronged you, love them. Those people who have abused you, love them. Those people who have hurt you, love them. Those people who have ridiculed you and made fun of you and insulted you, love them. That person who cheated on you, love them. That person who lied to you, who manipulated you, love them. That person who betrayed you, love them, love them, love them. Are we willing to take that step? Jesus said, what? He really wants me to love this person? He really wants me to get rid of hatred? He wants us to get rid of these things, hatred and revenge, and and he wants us to replace it with love and forgiveness. He wants us to treat our enemies with compassion because Jesus has called us to love our enemies and everybody in between. In Philemon 1, Paul is writing to Philemon. It's, It's a very small chapter in the Bible. And Philemon apparently was uh somewhat of a wealthy guy, and he had a a servant named Onesimus. And Onesimus, uh, we don't really know fully what he did, but we know that that he did something that um, that his, uh, his, his master Philemon did not approve of and apparently ran away or something. So anyhow, Onesimus is with Paul now. So Paul is writing a letter to Philemon. And look, look what it says. It says, it seems you lost Onesimus for a little while, so that you could have him back forever. He is no longer like a slave to you. He's more than a slave, for he is a beloved brother, especially to me. Now he will mean much more to you, both as a man and as a brother in the Lord. So if you consider me your partner, welcome him as you would welcome me. And if he has wronged you in any way or owes you anything, charge it to me. Paul's saying, yeah, I I know that you and Onesimus have been enemies for a while and I'm sending him back. And and if if he has hurt you, if he owes you anything, you charge me for that. 
And, and here's Philemon, and, and he gets his servant back. We don't know how the story ends, but, but I, I think that Philemon probably took the advice and probably accepted him back. But here's the thing. Sometime in your life, you'll have an Ernestimus that comes to you. You'll have somebody that comes that's an enemy, that's treated you wrong, that's done things that hurt you, that's abused you. And sooner or later, they show up, and you have a right to be angry and bitter. Or you could show mercy, and you could bless them. Can we do the extraordinary thing, the amazing thing, the unearthly thing? See, God wants us to be like him in our love. God's saying, yeah, this person, this enemy that you have, if they've done anything wrong to you, let me know and I'll pay it. I'll take care of that debt. Don't hold it against them. You, you let go of that. This is between me and you. We need to let go. We need to forgive. We need to love those who've hurt us. And you say, well, but, but you don't know what they've done. They've hurt me. I just can't forgive them. God says, whatever they owe you, put it on my account. Put it on my account. Because in your notes, God will pay back what your enemy has stolen. God will pay it back. He's the one that will make things right. He'll pay it back. Don't seek revenge. Don't seek to, to hate somebody. Don't, don't show them disrespect because they've disrespected you. Think about the mercy that God has shown you. How, when, when you had trouble, how he protected you. When you got off course in your life, probably even deliberately, how he loving you, corrected you, and guided you back onto the right path. See, the very person, think about this for a moment, the very person who you dislike the most, maybe it's a political leader, maybe it's a whole political party, maybe it's an individual who hurt you, think about the person you dislike the most in this life. That is the person God has called you to love. Jesus said what? Love your enemies. Think about the mercy that he's shown us. See, when God shows us mercy, we can show that mercy to other people because our life is too short to live it vindictive and to live it in anger. He wants us to love. When should we love? Love when somebody lashes out at you. Love them. When somebody tries to, to, to hurt you, to say something against you, love them. When somebody cusses you out, love them. Don't don't fall into those same traps. And when you're tempted to do that to somebody else, when you're tempted to gossip about somebody, turn it around to love. When you're tempted to, to seek revenge, turn it around to love. Love instead of hate. Love instead of anger. Because God has called us to love the unlovable. He's called us to love the outcast. He's called us to love the reject. He's called us to love the bullies. He's called us to love the jerks. He's called us to love the criminals. And as a follower of Jesus Christ, we should be looking around. We should be looking for opportunities to love people that we don't like. But it's hard. Jesus said what? He said, love your enemies. Bless them and do good for them and pray for them. Father, we come to you now. And we know this is kind of a tough thing to love our enemies because some of us, we've been hurt deeply and we don't want to love. We want to lash out. But Lord, let your love flow through us right now. Lord, we receive your love your love, which is so overwhelming that even when we were your enemy, you loved us. So help us to love our enemies in return. Maybe where you are right now, you've never put your faith in Jesus. And so I would encourage you to take that step of faith today, to put your hope in the one who can transform your heart, who can give you the ability to love not just those who are close to you, but you can love even your enemy because that's how much God gives you of his love. It's love that's overflowing. And after all that he's done for us, and we can reflect some of that love to others. So call on him, call on him. 
Today is the day. In Jesus' name.